if you look at the state level, the subsidiary of, of government, mm-hmm. um, there's always gray area within interpretations. And the, when I hear that, uh, Ian Lockwood, who's a brilliant transportation planner and great urbanist, uh, he's over at Tool Design now, and I, I had the pleasure of working with him. We would come across that, and he summed it up that that's a technical brush off. So this is what would happen: we'd go in, and it's oh no, our hands are tied. The state said we we can't do this or that. The thing is, is that you need to actually read what these statutes say. You need to look at the case law associated with it, and I assure you, there's wiggle room with it. And you just spend an hour in your state legislature, you know, in the the gallery overlooking that. And and you will see that there is lots of wiggle room in what's written on the books, especially with land planning and these development projects. Um, So you just need to read it and become educated on it. And I'm, I'm always shocked at how many people stop at the first line or stop at what they were told by somebody else. So I would read that, interpret it. There is, if you actually are stuck on it and, and, Strong Towns is working with Urban 3 right now in uh, Utah with the Municipal League. So every state, they either have a Municipal League or League of Cities that is an advocacy group at a state level dealing with the state legislature, representing all the cities. And in Utah, their membership, I think there are 300 cities in Utah that are part of their membership. And when you look at the list, you don't get over a thousand people in the city until you get to like city 220. So you have 220 cities under a thousand people incorporated in Utah. And the, um, the league out there is doing a great job of advocating, advocating at the state level to undo some of these things that have, have tied the hands of these communities. So I always look for the gray area because that's the easy route. I always look at reading exactly what those ordinances are. And then if it's really dumb, and, and we know a lot of this is, or it's poorly written, right. yeah. there's a process to get that changed. And there's advocates you have out there to do that. And um, trust me, uh, the community I was in, Ranson, we we were able to get lots of legislation through at the state level. It was painful. It's it, It's tough. It's not easy work. But there are allies you have out there that enjoy doing that. And that's what they do all the time. And um, don't don't let that be a hindrance. Just because it's written down doesn't mean, you know, all of these regulations, all these ordinances, they're living documents. And you need to, you know, it's not the Bill of Rights. It's not the Constitution. These are our management tools and they may need to be updated. But yeah, find the gray area. If that doesn't work, get the law changed. Strong Towns has looked at what the return on investment of public dollars into a project, what type of, if for every dollar of public investment that goes out, how much private investment needs to be put in there to generate revenue back to cover that. The number that we have found across the country that holds pretty true is for every dollar of, of public investment, you need $40 of private investment. So if I do the math, I take the $160 million project, I times that times 40, I I think, I probably get this wrong, but that would mean that there's going to be $6.4 billion worth of investment coming in. So if your town is getting like two World Trade Centers uh, out of that and or a, a whole new downtown, and that's going to do the tax base, that just that revenue will fund the bond and pay for it. I doubt that that return, you're getting $160 million. I, I, it's probably for a project or a problem that's been pushed under the rug for a whole bunch of different reasons. So um, I get asked the question all the time, how do I stop stuff? And I get que- asked all the time, how do I push stuff? What you need to do is you need to look at the process. So the, the good thing is on a local government level, their process is public. It involves public participation. And you just need to know where those pieces are at. So 
you need to get your elevator speech. Norm's got this great Toastmaster program that he's doing for all the members of Strong Towns. So you can practice that pitch. But identify when you have a project you don't want or a project you do want, understand the process, know where you need to show up and know who the decision makers are. And you need to share your opinion, good, bad, indifferent on that. And then you need to come back with these types of things and just show the numbers of it. And there's a very polite way to do it. Uh, I'm in my column tomorrow. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about that on some of those tools, but that's what I would look at. Numbers are pretty safe because numbers don't lie. They're, they're not personal. You can't, uh, you can't put negative adjectives in front of it. It's either, you know, two plus two equals four. It's very straightforward. So you can look at that. So understand those pieces of who's making the decision of these, understand where the liability is for these. So if, where is the money coming for that bond? You could do a lot of stuff. You can build a lot of schools. You can put a lot of people uh, in new safe housing. You can get new parks for $160 million. That, that's a lot of money, maybe relative. If you're in Chicago, maybe it's not, but in most of the towns and communities I work with, that's a lot of money. And understanding that debt service, and there's city after city after city that have debt service like this well beyond what um, their means are. So if you're paying more out in debt service, meaning the interest payments on the bond you have out than what you're collecting in revenue, or more in bond debt service out than what you're paying your police department, that's a that's a, those are things that at a higher level need to be talked about to do that. Um, the the sad thing with this is that these things usually by the time it gets to this, so hey, how do I, I'm aware of it? How do I stop it? It's gone through the first six stages of this. So it's really important to, to get involved. But um, share, just stick with the math, talk to the folks that actually have the uh, decision-making process on it. And every time there's public comment, work with Norm and the Toastmasters and other members of, of Strong Towns to get that speech down so that you can be clear and concise in your two to three minutes in a public hearing to share this in a, in a way that's positive and, and why it's not a good project. So people feel good when you leave the microphone, they just don't feel you're the squeaky wheel. Um, but yeah, that you have to kind of hack the system on that and get engaged.